Our shoe choice can be one of the quickest and easiest ways to shave minutes off our finish time. So in this video, we'll answer the question, is this the ultimate High Rocks Super Shoe? I'll be diving into specifically how this shoe performs in each of the eight exercise stations and eight kilometers of running that comprise the Hyrox Race workout and how it compares to its cheaper and younger sibling, the Deviate Nitro 2. From the moment you put on the shoe, there were three things that jumped and stood out. Firstly, the weight at 194 grams in a UK size eight. It feels an incredibly lightweight and nimble shoe. Secondly, in terms of the upper, the new multi-directional ultra weave material this is constructed of is incredibly breathable and thin and thirdly the feel of the rear nitro infused foam in the heel of the shoe has got significantly more flex and propulsion than the deviate nitro 2 these three factors combined with an array of other key features I discovered while testing this shoe, all of which I'll dive into and share with you in this video, is why I think this shoe has elevated Puma into the big league of race day super shoes. So let's get into what those features are and why they matter. Briefly diving into the specs, with a stack height of 40 millimeters in the rear of the shoe and 32 in the front, we have a heel to toe drop of eight millimeters. In terms of grip on the shoe, both the forefoot and the rear of the shoe contain a layer of Puma grip. This is noticeably thinner than on the regular Deviate Nitro, which positively contributes to making the Elite model a lighter shoe. But on the flip side, does mean that overall, this is a less durable shoe over a longer period of time, which is something we see across race day super shoe brands. The shoe contains a premium carbon fiber Puma plate that runs the complete length of the shoe. This is sandwiched between Puma's Nitro Elite foam cushioning. The question I think matters most is how this shoe holds up and performs in workouts and the exercise stations that comprise the High Rocks Race workout. So let's dive in. In terms of speed work running in this shoe, it has comfortably delivered on helping me complete training sessions in excess of my race day pace. This is another reason why I think this particular model propels Puma into the race day super shoe big league. On the ski erg, it provides a steady base to be pulling a solid ski pace. I felt stable and solid underfoot throughout the thousand meters. On the sledge push, you've ample grip to keep that sledge moving. Even on the more slippery track we tend to find in the gym versus the High Rocks race venue carpet, in comparison to the regular DV8 Nitro 2, I did find I needed to emphasize the push off from the foot through the central section of the foot to really minimize slippage. This was a micro adjustment, but noticeable all the same. And why it's really important to train in the shoes a little bit before you race, I was a little bit apprehensive about the sledge pull ahead of testing, wondering if that relatively small patch of rear grip would be enough, particularly when using the lean and step back technique, which pushes through the rear of the shoe. The good news is this wasn't an issue, and I got as much traction in the Elite model shoe as I previously had in the DV8 Nitro 2. The Burpee broad jumps were a standout station for the shoe. That propulsive spring really comes into its own when you can feel that return on energy through the carbon plate, powering you forward on your jumps. On the 1000 meter row, I found that the shoe fitted really well, both with that uh, foot strap over the toes, and secondly, uh, in the heel position, I was able to get the full range of motion on each and every row stroke. On the farmer's kettlebell carry, I did find that I needed to keep my weight over the middle and center of the shoe, that soft cushion rear of the shoe, which is excellent for returning on energy during running, can absorb a lot of that weight from the kettlebells, slowing you down slightly. Whereas if you can keep your weight over the center of the foot, you aren't losing any of that extra energy in compression in the shoe, but instead propelling yourself forward. On the lunges, this was the only exercise station where I felt some degree of instability. In making this shoe as lightweight as it is, there is a less rigid structure holding your foot in place over that foam cushioning in comparison to the regular DV8 Nitro shoe where your foot sits in what feels like a deeper, more structured rear of the shoe. 
Now, if you're somebody who's prone to ankle rolling, this is something you want to be aware of and to consider. Both the points I've made in relation to the kettlebell farmer's carry and the lunges are things I've previously noted in other videos and are equally applicable to other top tier race day shoes. For the wall balls, the shoe provided a firm base to throw and receive the ball from. Now there's one big problem with relying on shoes alone to go faster at high rocks. If you really want to go faster at high rocks, you need to work on your exercise station techniques. And for tips on those, you want to check out the videos on this playlist next.